Hello, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, we'll be continuing our series on winemaking analyses and how-to videos. And today, we will demonstrate how to measure SO2 in our wines. Okay, but first, a little bit about SO2. SO2 is the most common additive given to wines. It can be added as a gas, or more commonly, as prepared potassium metabisulfite solution. It's used in almost all wines today. A little known fact is that yeast produce 1 to 14 parts per million sulfites in wines during the fermentation process. If SO2 is above 10 parts per million, the wine label must have contained sulfites on it. 350 parts per million of SO2 is the maximum allowable in the USA. And adding SO2 has had the single most important impact on the improvement of wine quality across the ages. Sulfur provides protection against oxidation and bacterial spoilage, but can cause off odors and flavors if used in excess. So we want to know exactly what the quantities are that we have in our wine. Free SO2 is the measure of unbound SO2, which can contribute to protection against oxidation and spoilage of our wines. Total SO2 is a measure of all sulfur forms present in the sample. Bound SO2 does not contribute to the protection of our wine. Sulfur dioxide is a colorless gas and can dissolve into liquid. Here in this figure, we can see the molecular form of sulfur dioxide in water, which is pH dependent. And it's in equilibrium with the bisulfite form, HSO3, and the sulfite form, SO3, which is also pH dependent. So in a wine with a pH between three and four, we primarily have the bisulfite form here in black. And the molecular form has a very low solubility in this liquid form. But this is actually the form that is antimicrobial and important for our antioxidant activities. The bisulfite form and sulfite forms are inactive microbially and oxidatively. The bisulfite form reacts and binds to other wine components, making up the bound form of the total SO2. So it is the molecular form that is the important active form of SO2. And in this table on the right-hand side, you can see how the molecular form changes as a percentage of the pH of the wine. Basically, as the pH rises, the percent molecular SO2 declines. On the right-hand side of the table, you can see the free SO2 concentration necessary to get the 0.8 parts per million of molecular SO2 desired to control microbial and oxidative properties of the wine. So the main point of this table is that as the pH of the wine increases, one has to increase the free SO2 concentration in the wine in order to have its effective properties of antioxidant, antimicrobial activities. So these antioxidant properties protect our wine against oxidation, oxidation of the color, oxidation of the aroma compounds, particularly the subtle fruit aromas that we're interested in. But sulfite can also be bound to other metabolites in the wine, making it less effective. So again, we have the molecular, the sulfite, the bisulfite, and we have unstable compounds where, which are part of the bound SO2, which includes sugars, uronic acids, ketonic acids. And then we have stable compounds, particularly that of sulfites that have bound to acetaldehyde. In the gaseous form, SO2 is dangerous and can be toxic to humans. One must be cautious not to breathe it in. In small amounts in wines, it is not problematic although there is a very rare person who is allergic to its byproduct, sulfite. SO2 or sulfites do not cause headaches as commonly believed. Today we'll talk about the Ripper titration method, 
It's based on a method developed by Ripper in 1898. It uses iodine to react with the free SO2. When all the SO2 is used up, the free iodine appears as a dark blue starch iodine complex as the endpoint. It's a quick method, but somewhat inaccurate and subject to error. But as I have experienced in the past, some of the other methods are not very accurate as well. And so this is relatively reliable and used in wineries all over the world. Some of the other methods that could be used are SO2 strips, but they're highly inaccurate and crude. And there are titration meters such as the HANA SO2 titration meter. However, this machine has broken down several times for me within a year or two after use. So I am a little bit dissatisfied with this method and it's about a seven or $800 piece of equipment. And then this is a common one found on home winemaking sites, the Vinmetrica SO2 analyzer. However, in our laboratory, we tried to do a comparison between the methods and we found it to be relatively inaccurate as well. So I prefer the Ripper method. Let's look at the outline of the free SO2 measurement for the Ripper method. First, we'll add 100 mils of a wine sample to a 250 mil Erlenmeyer flask. Then we'll add five mils of starch indicator, followed by five mils of 25% sulfuric acid. We want to rapidly titrate that with 0 0.02 normal iodine to get an endpoint with a blue color. That blue color should show for about 30 seconds. It will be easy with a white wine, but is more difficult with a red wine. And you may need to use a yellow light behind the red wine to make that color change visible. The temperature of the wine solution should not exceed 20 degrees centigrade. For total SO2, we would add 20 mils of wine sample to a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Add 10 mils of one normal sodium hydroxide. Mix, stopper the flask, and allow it to react for approximately 10 minutes. This will allow hydrolysis of the acetaldehyde bound sulfurous acid form. Then we'll add 5 mils of starch indicator, add 10 mils of 25% H2SO4, rapidly titrate the free sulfurous acid with 0.0 to normal iodine solution and look for the end point turning blue for at least 30 seconds. We'll get to the calculations of free and total SO2 at the end of this video. Okay, now for the measurements. For SO2 measurements, you will need these three items. You'll need starch indicator, 25% sulfuric acid, and 0 0.02 normal iodine. Okay, I'm demonstrating the Ripper method to measure free SO2. First thing you want is 100 mils of a wine sample, which we'll put into this 250 mil beaker. And then I have in this burette 0 0.02 normal iodine. And I'm going to titrate it until I see a blue color forming in this container after I've added some 5 mils of sulfuric acid and 5 mils of starch indicator. So first we'll add the starch indicator. Then we're going to add the sulfuric acid. And then I want to do my measurements immediately, not wait because the SO2 that is being generated as a gas will start blowing off. So I want to get this going as soon as possible. I'm gonna mix it in. I'm gonna start dripping the iodide, drop by drop, and it's already turning blue. 
know if you can see that, but it disappeared. So I have to do this until it turns blue for 30 seconds or longer. So again, it's turning blue, which is kind of an indication that there's not a lot of SO2 here in this sample, but it's disappearing. So I'm gonna keep adding a little bit more. I keep stirring it and it's disappeared again. So I keep doing this until I see a persistent blue for 30 seconds. So I'm guessing my uh, SO2 is going to be around 10 parts per million, but I don't really know. So I have to just keep judging it. It's getting closer. The blue is starting to last longer, but it's still disappearing after just a few seconds. Speed this up a little. Okay, now it's starting to persist a little bit, but that's not 30 seconds. We're getting close. I'll just do one drop at a time now so that I can get an accurate volume of the iodide that I had to use and make my calculations for free SO2. Yes, I still have some bluish color in this wine. So there we have it. We reached our volume and we used two mils of iodide. So we'll make the calculation on two mils of 0.02 normal iodide and see how many parts per million of free SO2 we have in our wine sample. Here's the formula for calculating out the free SO2 and the total SO2 and the bound SO2. The bound SO2 is simply the total SO2 minus the free SO2. To calculate out for either of the total or free SO2 measurements, we use this formula that has a volume of the titrant used, the concentration of the titrant of the iodine, or the normality of the sodium hydroxide. We factor in the molecular mass of SO2, which is 64.066 grams per mole. We use the equivalence factor of one mole of SO2 for every two moles of sodium hydroxide, or one mole of SO2 for two moles of iodine, and then we calculate out the volume of the sample analyzed. So we have two mils of titrant times 0 0.02 normal iodine times 64.066 times 0.5 times 1,000 equals 12.8 parts per million SO2. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please join me in future videos where I will continue to discuss our wine analysis methods. Have a great day.